I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, when your time's up, your time is up. And I'm going to share some life wisdom that I've learned from several friends and family members who have served in the military and who have been through combat, who some of them have gotten blown up. I've had friends that have gotten killed. I had one of my high school buddies was a Navy SEAL. I had several friends that were in the first Gulf War. I had my dad and my uncle were in Vietnam. I had both my grandfathers were in World War II. One of them saw what the Nazis did to the Jewish people. The other one was in the Navy during World War II. And when you are surrounded by and raised by and grow up with people that serve in the military, I had a buddy that got blown up in Iraq in 2006. What they realize, I'll give you an example, like my, my Uncle Richie, when he was in World War II, or not World War II, I say Vietnam, when he was in Vietnam, it was like, it was like the first two weeks he was over, I it was like the second day he was over there, he was walking around, and one of the guys on point in front of him stepped on a land bond, one of those bouncing Betty things that would jump, go up to about waist high and then basically blow your legs off. And so this thing ended up, you know, taking off his legs and he's like laying on the ground, like the first thing out of his mouth is like, I can't believe I came to Vietnam and got my legs blown off. Or he said, I went, I went to Vietnam and I got my legs blown off. That's the first thing he hears after the, you know, the pop of the explosion. And I remember another time he was telling me a story because I was like, you know, what moments like had a real impact on you? What moments were made you go, whoa, this is, you know, something funky is going on here. And he was in, they were somewhere in the bush, somewhere deep within the jungle, and they had incoming mortar rounds coming in on their position. And so everybody was scrambling to jump back into their foxholes, and this explosion went off behind my uncle as he's running for his foxhole, and something hit him and knocked him forward into the foxhole. And he just figured out oh, it must have been a tree branch that hit him. And when he turned around, what he realized was on top of him was the headless, the legless, and the armless torso of the radio guy. And the guy still had the radio pack attached to his headless, armless, legless torso. And he just you just imagine when a body is like shredded by explosions, like what you're going to be covered in of that person and you know whereas just literally seconds before you'd been talking shooting the shit and now what's left of his body is all over you it's on your face it's just you're covered in it it's on your fingernails it's on your face some of it gets in your mouth and you can't stop to think about how fucking horrible and how awful that is because you're getting shelled and you got to fight back it's only until later on when you have time to think about the gravity of what just happened and I remember he he got to a point because one of the things over there is is the uh, Viet Cong used to mine the rice paddies and the little dikes that you know kept the water and you know designated in certain areas. And so he said, "Don't walk in the dikes because that's where the mines are." And after he you know following all of the things that he was told, wearing the helmet, the flak jack, the whole fucking nine yards. He's over there. After a while, you're over there, and I mean, he was one of two guys that came back from his unit because everybody else was either dead or had been sent home too wounded to return to combat so there's like two dudes and he got a purple heart too and gotten wounded when he's over there but he was he was all right to go back to duty but he said that he got to a certain point and you know he was an engineer and and uh so he worked with you know uh demining the roads and things of that nature and so there's more than one occasion where he had his knife and you know there's a guy standing on a landmine that he can't get up because otherwise the thing will go off. And so he's got his face like right up there against this guy's boots. And this, this guy freaks out and gets scared or jumps off. Then both of them are going to get killed. And so when you go through traumatic moments like that and you see your friends like, get killed around you and you see guys that had a hundred more, hundred times more going for them in their own lives than you did at that point, and you're talking to him one minute, and the next minute his head's fucking gone. I mean, that has an effect on you. And, and he realized, he said, you know what? He says, even the guys that do everything they're not supposed to, you know, they don't walk the dice, they don't this and that, and they still get fucking blown to hell, and they still get killed. And he said, finally he got to a point where he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm walking the dice because I'm tired of my fucking feet being wet, 
And if I get blown up, I get fucking blown up. If, if my time's up, it is up, up and there's nothing I can do about it. And that was one of the lessons that he learned that he, that he took away from that. It's like some people, it's your time to go and others, it, it's not. And until you've accomplished and done what you were sent here to do in this life, you cannot be harmed. And so the point being is like thinking about this intense stuff and these life lessons and this wisdom and how it can help you in your own life is that you need to get your ass busy because at the end of the day, 500 years from now, nobody's going to give a shit who you were or who I was or who any of us were that lived on this planet at this time in human history. You know, it's just weird when I sit here and I think about this at some point in the future because this thing's going on YouTube. And it's like, how? who knows how many years, how many decades or centuries or maybe even thousands of years. Just, you know, 10,000 years from now, people will still be watching this video. But at the end of the day, who's going to care? Because all of us aren't going to be around 500 years from now. And so you're only here for a short period of time. And you've got to spend the minutes and the hours and the days and the weeks and the months and the years of your life doing something and so you might as well choose to do something that excites you that is compelling to you that is emotionally compelling to you that you have a passion for that you want to do that you want to be a part of just because unless you're doing something you really have a passion for you're never going to be very good at it you know i remember when i got into my 20s i had a couple of my friends my high school buddies that i went with guys and girls just all of a sudden boom they're like dead and you're just going what the fuck i mean it's really shocking when things like that happen and it causes you to appreciate life and realize that, hey, you know, this is a journey that we're all on and it's not so much about achieving your goals or the destination of arriving at where the lifestyle that, you, that your goals are going to bring you someday. It's learning to find happiness and passion in the journey of achieving your goals because most of your goals, like especially big ones, building a business from scratch, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to build a multi-million dollar company and you haven't, and you're, today you're, is your starting point, it's going to probably take you 10 years, maybe at least five or six years just to figure out how to make, make a profitable business model. Maybe longer. Some people slave away for 20 years, for two decades at their craft before they finally figure it out. The point being is that if you're going to spend your life doing something, you might as well spend it doing something you really want to do. It's something that makes you happy because why the fuck would you want to be on this journey and spend your life doing things that just make you complain and make you unhappy? That is definitely something to think about. So if you find this message of value, you can show your appreciation by going to my website, understandingrelationships.com, click on the Wibia toolbar, which is at the bottom of your screen, and click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information in this video. At the very least, please share this page by, with all your friends and family by clicking any one of the social network sharing buttons, which are also located in the Wibia toolbar at the bottom of your screen if you're watching this video on my website. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, the share buttons are right up top along the top of the video. And if you have a question that you want to ask me, or there's a topic you want me to cover in a future video newsletter, go to my website, understandingrelationships.com, click the Contact Me tab on the left-hand side of your screen, and send me one or two paragraphs maximum detailing your questions, your situation, or your challenges, and just give me several days to get back to you with a response because I get a lot of email from the Internet, and I also get a lot from my paying phone coaching customers. And I have to answer theirs first, but be patient, and I will get back to you. And if you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. And you can do that, do that by going to any page of my website, click the Products tab, which is located at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon.